With Sabres head coach Ralph Kruger. Welcome to my comfort zone. <laughs> it's I'm a beautiful a, spot. I'm assuming you feel pretty good in these parts. Uh, I feel like your reputation precedes you already because of how you described your welcome to Buffalo kind of moment as you were going through the process of getting this job. Take us back to, you know, when you were talking about wandering around town and, and, and you know, pub hopping, if you will. Did you initiate any conversations back then or were you just kind of trying to listen to what other people were saying? I actually did just at breakfast this morning up in the Marriott. The waitress went, congratulations. And I had about seven conversations with her about the Sabres. So <laughs> it was not only at the hotel, it was in, uh, in the streets asking people questions about playoff games and drifting around and it was it was very uh, very natural very spontaneous everybody was warm and uh, you could feel the love for the sabers but also the hunger for something to happen do you i mean you kind of mentioned it on your your initial press conference um, that one of the most important things you could do right now is to listen do you consider that to be one of your greatest strengths and if so how did that come about, that that became kind of part of your, your story? Well, leadership is something I'm very interested in developing in my own uh, pathway in life nonstop. I, I don't think you're ever a finished product as a leader. And one of the things as a young coach beginning at 29, you seem to push things a lot onto players. And my long time with the Swiss national team program, I remember being a lot more autocratic in the first half of my tenure but in the second half I felt opening up uh, within myself and allowing the players to take more responsibility in the leadership process and involving them in leadership and that's really where I am today I see leadership as something that everybody in the in the team has to be responsible for not just the head coach or the captain everybody has these moments of responsibility and you need to step up when they happen and so uh, you know for me it's it's been, uh, it's been a good journey and it's something I'm excited to, to put into play here. How do you get today's generation to be good listeners in a world of devices and different kinds of distractions? Yeah. Well, no, the listening is, is, is big. We need to understand the people that we're working with in a team to bring out the potential. If we don't uh, have all the uh, real clarity between each you know, two or more individuals, there's always going to be room for... Uh, uncertainty and negative energy and I think that that's something I'm very good at is keeping the flow of communication open and on the table it's not always friendly it's not always going to be smiley but it's going to be it's going to be out there and I, I like to be that way also with our fans and with the public let's just tell it as it is and let's all work together to to find out what the Sabres are made of and I think that uh, with the young players of today you need to be very strong and understanding they they want uh, instant gratification they're not as patient maybe as the as the athlete of 30 years ago and you need to be quick you need to be clear and you need to also vary in your forms of communication you can't be stoic and you can't be boring you need to keep it dynamic as your video meetings or your pregame meetings i think getting shortened to the point uh, is what the modern generation really wants and needs mm -hmm. but you need to build a foundation before you can do that and before they can trust that what were you like as a player as far as what you wanted from your coach I was always frustrated with the lack of unity in the in the in my 13 years as a professional I, I did not play in the National Hockey League but I played in in national teams and in European professional sports and it doesn't really matter where you are I think as a player you like to feel unity you like to feel camaraderie that's why I think we play team sports and we're not individual athletes you know and it's it's something that I I uh, I, I missed actually and I think I learned a lot from uh, from that environment I, I also believe that that's that's where everything begins is that we get connected off the ice before we get out on the ice and play and I like to spend a lot of time working on that Obviously, you had the opportunity to uh, go to the World Championships and meet with some important players on the Sabres. Can you take us through how you introduced yourself okay. to them and then where it went beyond that? Well, very modern for my age was uh, began with text messaging and they're really good at it. I, uh, I just reached out to, to Jack and Sam and uh, we had a wonderful conversation before we actually met and on two different evenings because they were on different teams yes I uh, I was able to you know spend spend some time with them and uh, the meetings went 
really natural. It flowed well. The conversations were honest and open, and uh, we had a good start in Slovakia for sure. More so than, I mean, did you have any idea what the conversation might be like? I mean, how hard is it to kind of keep a completely clean yeah. slate when you're going into something like that? I do not do a lot of research on opinions from outside. I, I really didn't go and, and, and Google 75 interviews of theirs or phone their last four coaches. Or I, I don't really do that. I, I, I'm a person that likes to make my own impressions. Even coming here to Buffalo, I didn't speak to a lot of people that I know very close to my heart, like Miroslav Satna, who who was a, uh, you know, he was a good friend of mine, or uh, John Van Boxmeer, who works in our, our pro scouting team, who I know very, very well. I didn't reach out to them before I came here because I really wanted to make my own impression and feel the heartbeat myself without any color coding on the way. And I think that's important with the players too. I'm, yes, I'm looking at some footage of the past, and yes, I'm having conversations with the, with the present coaching staff and with, the, with people in hockey ops, but. I'm limiting those really. I want to make experiences of my own, yeah. whether it's off the ice or as we hit the ice and give them a fresh slate, each and every player, to prove himself, to earn the ice time and earn the responsibility in our lineup. So what would your first impression of Sam and Jack be? Well, with, with Sam, it was uh, really that he's, he, he was a thinker. He was, uh, you know, he asked a lot of really good questions. We, uh, I could feel his hunger to want to become a, a competitor in the, in, in the National Hockey League when it comes to playoff time. And, uh, and, and we, we exchanged uh, and had very easy conversation with Jack. It was, uh, it was very much the same. But, uh, you know, they are different personalities, which is good and exciting. It's why I like to coach. It's... It's uh, you end up with a mix, and uh, I, I thought you know Jack is processing very well what he's experienced these last four years. I think he sees really clearly what we need to do here and how we can do it. And uh, both of them gave me a lot of inputs that I'm I'm still processing myself. And it's good I still have four months before we we uh, you know kick off the season. But uh, valuable valuable thoughts. How do you convince this group, still unsure of what exactly it will look like? Yeah to believe in one another and play together? Well, I think we have to begin by, by getting that picture really small here early on and, uh, and, and let's, uh, let's remember the past and take some of those lessons with us. But more than anything, let's, let's, let's focus on uh, everything we can control initially. That's what I'm going to be all about. And, uh, and, and then just trust, trust that it's going to take us to good places early and then we can start becoming possibly more visionary. I'm not going to be extremely visionary in my conversations with the public or the media here early on because I don't have enough information yet to do that properly you know I think more than anything I can only promise we're going to go to work and we're going to be very good at taking care of what we can take care of on a daily basis and consistency will be important to me at a high level and uh, and, and though you know that's the feeling right now are there any hockey topics and or cliches like when we're talking about games that you really have no time for that they're <laughs> a waste of time for the players and probably the media too why well, I put myself under pressure to reinvent things whether it's uh, whether it's our, our practice sessions or whether it's pregame meetings I like to find a special path to every game even though we have 82 of them let's change it up in some way shape or form I think surprising the players without disrupting them is important in 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 the season so uh, I'm not I'm not afraid of cliches but I, I certainly don't use them very much who influenced you the most as a coach that allows you to have this kind of fresh approach to things I think more than anything, I, I reach outside of the game. Uh, since I became a coach uh, 30 years ago, I have always been one to reach outside the game to learn from others leading in other fields because the X and O's and the, the hockey knowledge is kind of out there for all of us to take and adapt and put together in a package as we choose. But the, the way we then present it to the team and we, 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 we mold the team in a psychological way is, uh, you know, you want to be unique there and you want to find your own pathway. And I think that going outside of the game has been, I don't really have one person that I would, mm -hmm. I would give it credit to. Yeah. I would say that I'm just a, I'm a permanent learner. I'm, I'm here in Buffalo to continue to learn. I'd like to surround myself with good people. A lot of them will know a lot more about 
uh, special areas than I do and with these people together uh, to grow. I think that's what life is all about and it's a great vehicle to do it here. So what specifically maybe could you have taken from your last job that can help you now? More than anything, I, I saw the organization as a whole, being a chairman of a, of, of a professional sports organization slash president allowed me to see the many, many pieces outside of the team itself mm -hmm. and how important they all are. And I think that the, the respect for, for the machine that we have here is, is, uh, is much higher than when I was focused in my little coaching world. Uh, I see the global opportunity that we have, not only playing in the Key Bank Center or on the road, it's also with our foundation mm -hmm. and uh, the impressions we can leave on the young people that follow the Sabres is important to me and possibly that's grown a lot and how all of that needs to be webbed together for the organization to truly be a winning organization. I think that lifting a trophy doesn't make you a winner alone, it's how you get to there that, that is uh, every bit as, as important. So we'll, we'll uh, you know, I understand that now. Well, and obviously in-game moments can, you know, further you along towards that trophy. Yeah. Can you give an example of maybe how you've been non-conventional, yeah. in-game adjustments, things you've done that, that yeah. have you less traditional than others? I think I'm very quick at adjusting ice time, lines, uh, maximizing somebody's optimal performance and or possibly you know, taking ice time away mid-game mid to challenge somebody to raise their, raise their game. I, I, I find that, uh, that I love the, the space within the beginning to the end of the game and uh, to live that fully and to feel it and not get stuck too much in a, in a coaching framework that you maybe put a plan together and you just go with it. I, I'm very flexible and uh, you know, many, many moments come to mind where where, where, where that's occurred and or just trying to be a little bit ahead of what actually then happens in the game because of, often we'll get signals positive or negative ahead of time yeah. and are you as a coach capable of reading those before they actually happen to avoid and or build on them and I think that, uh, that it has been one of my strengths. This might be easier then, uh, what's the most emotional moment okay. you've ever experienced as a coach? Well the most emotional moment for sure uh, for me was uh, you know, that kicked off actually everything that's evolved since then was in 98 when I won the European Championship with an Austrian team actually. We won the Champions League in, in hockey with a complete outsider against Dynamo Moscow in the final. Uh, and and any time you had uh, moments like that, I would say beating Canada at the Olympic Games in Torino with the Swiss team was a highlight where the program changed direction and now there's a full team of Swiss players in the National Hockey League and at that time there was one Mark Streit. So uh, it, it's, it's moments that were short-lived where that group evolved but then also a moment like that with Switzerland and or even just being in the, in the coaching staff of Team Canada winning the gold medal at the Olympics in Sochi 2014. I, I think there's many, many highlights, um, some of them having to do with the, with the game itself and some of them having to do with seeing how people grew because possibly you led them right. What's the one thing this team, the Sabres, needs in your opinion? Belief and confidence. I think uh, just as a, as a whole, the, uh, the fan base and the, the passion for the game here is so, so outstanding. But the, uh, you know, the, at the moment there's doubt and there's, uh, I think we fall to the glass half empty. There's a cliche for you. <laughs> <laughs> or to the negative, uh, I can feel it. Uh, in the air and I could feel it in those discussions with, with the fans and we need, we need to turn that but we need to earn that. Nobody's going to give us that for free and I think getting confidence and getting belief in, in what, this, what the Sabres are capable of and what we're capable of with the, with the strong players that we have, um, that's going to be the biggest challenge here initially. Favorite color is blue? It's definitely blue. I've got uh, many, many, many shades of <laughs> suits in this color, so that, that's an easy one. And you like the accent of gold, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Best of luck, yeah. Ralph. Thank Thanks, you so Ralph. much.